Okay, so this gets back to kind of the um, the idea of the um, the Lorentz invariance that we talked about last time, and and I'm just going to repeat exactly the way that I defined this this final property. So I'm going to talk about the space time interval delta s squared, and I've been referencing this throughout, and um, so I wanted to kind of tie everything back together and talk about why this determines what type of event we have. So by definition, what we define is, and by the way, that's lowercase s, so not the uppercase that I use for reference frames. So by definition, we define this to be delta s squared equals, and I'm going to put, well, I won't put parentheses start, uh, delta x squared plus y squared plus delta z squared minus c delta t squared. Okay, so this is the, the absolute definition. This is something that is, is absolutely necessary to know how to calculate. Um, so you shouldn't have to look this up. I mean, it's really pretty straightforward. And the way I think about it, when you put the parentheses around it, this just becomes the spatial separation So we're taking the space difference and we're subtracting the time separation. And I'm going to use a slightly different word for that. I'm going to call this the temporal separation. All right, raise your hand in your head if you know what the word temporal is or if you've heard that before. Um, it, it just means time, having to do with time. So we talk about our spatial variables, though, as essentially kind of belonging to a different mathematical category, as, and that's not the category of mathematics. Anyway, uh, we, we, we say it has a very different characteristic. Spatial uh, variables are different than temporal variables. And now, uh, we, we see there are three dimensions of spatial uh, variables. As we draw here, there's one dimension of temporal variable. In theory, you could just as easily have an imaginary component of time too. And there are some, um, there are some solutions for Einstein general relativity theory that do include more than one dimension of time. We view it in the complex plane. But for our consideration here, we, we will only allow one, one direction of time, and it can only be positive. Um, well, no, I shouldn't say that, but it, it can only be real is what I mean to say. Okay, so in this case here, um, by the way, the, the fact that I'm multiplying C and delta T, that's just to ensure that I have the, the proper units take one second times the speed of light, that's one light second, is directly what it is. So, I want to consider now three different types of events. Consider, and I'm going to draw it like this, just on a Minkowski diagram. Uh, here's our origin, event A, well, let's say event A, and then uh, just as before, B, C, and D, where D is on that 45 degree line. And notice that events B and C are not on either of those axes. So at least from our current reference frame, when we look at the difference between uh, events A and B, there will be both some time and some space separation. Same with C. So for timely events. Oh, uh, actually, no, that's fine. So for time-like events, now uh, remem remember which of these, if you look at B, D, and C, which of those events is time-like separated from A? And the answer is B. So for event B here, now clearly event B doesn't happen at the origin like event A does. However, since they have a time-like separation, event B falls in the future light cone we can find some other reference frame that passes directly between A and B, having them both found at the origin. So for time-like events, what you can do is you can always find some reference frame where the spatial separation is zero. events. 
So in other words, when you connect those two events, you find some other reference frame where they, where they happen at exactly the origin, both of them. That means that for those two events, at least in that, in that frame that you just found, we can always say that if they both happen in the origin, this part of that uh, space-time interval is zero. So in this case, for any two time-like events, the space-time separation delta s squared is going to be minus c delta t, and we just squared it. I mean, you could just distribute the c squared and delta t squared. That's an, exactly the same. And now one more thing. What t is that? What time? Who is measuring that time? Now, hopefully, I mean, things are really kind of starting to, to, I think, mesh back together here. Because if you recall from my one or two lectures ago, we discussed something called the proper time. And specifically, we said, this is the time that's viewed on a watch that remains perfectly still. So if you're in a spaceship and you have a, a, a watch on a podium directly in front of you, if it never moves, what you're reading is the proper time on that watch. Every other observer that might see that watch moving will see it going at a slower rate. But in your case, no distance is elapsing. The only thing that's moving is time. So in that case, that's what we call the proper time. And that's exactly what this red world line would see. He's going to see events A and B both happen directly in front of them. And so he's directly measuring the proper time between them. And so I'm actually going to change this to be delta tau because he is, in fact, measuring those two events with zero space-like separation. Now, clearly, if you were the observer where this was your reference frame, so if you're in oops, reference frame S, and if you do happen to see event B happen, you know, not at the origin, you can still do this calculation. You can still take the spatial part squared minus the um, the, the, the time-like part squared, you can still do that. They're both going to be non-zero in that case, but here's the beauty of this. Um, now, if you take it on my word that these space-time intervals, as we've defined this, if you accept that these are, in fact, invariant quantities, meaning that if you calculate it in, S, in, in frame S, if you calculate it in frame S prime, if you calculate it in frame S double prime, you can mathematically prove, and, and you have to watch the, the video where, where I'll do this, um, you can mathematically prove that they will all calculate the same delta S squared. Even if they, they necessarily disagree on the, the space and the time parts, turns out, though, that they will all agree on the difference between it. One observer might see a greater spatial separation, but they might also see a greater time separation because time is going slower from them. When you take that difference, every observer will always agree on what the space-time space separation is. And that's why, if you have time-like events, the space-time separation will always be negative. The space, sorry, the time-like component will always outweigh the space-like component. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit more quickly through the same thing for space-like events. So consider here events A and C. Now, pretty clearly in our frame S again, for events A and C, that frame S would not see those events as being simultaneous. This observer would see A happen, and then a little bit later time, they would see C happen. But as we know, what we've just talked about, though, is that that particular observer might see that order, A and then C. Now, if you walk a little faster, you might see more like AC. You walk even faster, you might see AC really quick, and then you walk fast enough, AC. So, as long as we know that, it, 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 all we have to know is that events A and C are space-like separated, then you can find, a, you can start moving faster and faster until you find a reference frame 
where A and C are in fact simultaneous. And so if you can find an, a, a reference frame where they're simultaneous, what that means is C squared delta T squared is zero because they both have the same time coordinate, at least in that frame. And so then that means that in that particular reference frame, again, the, the one that we found where that's true, then if we calculate this, delta S squared now simply becomes delta X squared plus whatever delta Y squared plus C squared. Because the temporal portion vanishes. And what we see here now is that for any space-like event then, this value will always be positive. And again, to be clear, it might be the case where in some reference frame, you might have both a space and a time separation, like, like the frame S here. So in this case, S has both a space separation and a time separation. But again, we can very clearly see that the space component of the separation is much greater than the time. And so even though this observer sees the two events happening at different times, because this space-time interval quantity is invariant, whatever that observer that does see them simultaneous, whatever they calculate to be that, that, that delta S squared, will match every other observer even though the particular spatial and temporal parts might both be greater or smaller, their, their difference will always be, again, the same. And that's always going to be true for any space-like pair of events. Their space-time uh, their, their space separation is always going to be positive. Now, the last two things to say about this here, the um, last two quick things. Well, most of, my, most of the discussion that I wanted to get to it about linear algebra will push off in the next class. But the, um, I do want to talk about, let's see, light-like separations so if you have for example event a right there and event c let's see right here we'll call it d i think so what we've said is that in this case these two pair of events are are they fall on the path of light if you are at a you send out a beam of light. That beam of light goes fast, or it goes at the speed of light. At some later time, you mark its position at point D. This is exactly the world line that light takes, and we say these are light-like events. Or in other words, a beam of light will, will pass exactly both of those points on its trajectory. So we can calculate that same quantity. What is delta S squared? And so I, the way that I want to do this is break this up into, I'm going to call this my space interval, or just space. And this is going to be my time interval. And specifically, if I take the speed of light, I'm going to write C. The speed of light is, is simply how much space light covers divided by how much time it covers. And now, in this case, let's, let's assume that the light is going in what we're calling the x direction. So in this case here, we can talk about the, 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 the amount of space that light covers just simply as x. So we have delta x there. So it matches only going the x direction. So five light years divided by the amount of time, five years. So all I have to do here is when I calculate the space-time separation, I think you guys can see where this is going. But when I calculate my space-time separation, 
all I have to do is substitute C for that. Because we immediately know that the amount of distance it covers divided by time will always give us 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in every reference frame. That, that's one of the postulates of relativity, by the way. This value has to be the same, no matter who you are, where you are. So, delta S squared equals delta X squared plus So, here's the full general description. And now, by the way, we had said that we're simply going to look at, we're, we're going to orient our axes so that we're only move, the light's only going in the x direction. So this becomes delta x squared minus c squared. I'll skip that for a moment, delta t squared. The c squared, all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to plug in this. Delta x over delta t squared. Do you see why that's important there? Because now all of a sudden, this essentially just tells us it converts light years divided by years times years. It just takes us back to light years. So as it turns out, for light-like events, the space-time separation will always be zero. Again, exactly by the way we define it, light always covers exactly the same spatial and temporal components, at, at equivalently. One way you can interpret that, by the way, is that, and, and you hear this said often, I won't, I won't say anything more other than just the, the statement, the premise statement. Um, you can interpret this to say that light does not experience time. And I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> so I'm going to pause the recording here. Um, I, I'll stick on as long as you guys want. There are a couple more things I want to do, but we'll get to that next time. So.